Hey guys, welcome back. BTCKR here. We're back with a comparison of the official fidget cube versus the original, the ANSI Labs fidget cube. Now, we've had both of these for a while, been hands on with them, uh, been trying them out and using them a lot, and we absolutely love them. But we figured since we've got two from two different places, that we should do a comparison and weigh on, on which one we think is better. And there's literally dozens of places you can get fidget cubes, but what we've stuck with is sort of the two high-end options because we actually, funny story, not so funny, uh, we ordered one of the cheap knockoffs and it's been like two months. And it still hasn't come. So, you know what? Why don't we talk about sort of the two best fidget cubes out there. Yeah, so these are both really high end. This one comes from officialfidgetcube.com and that's why we're calling it the official fidget cube. And this one comes from ANSI Labs who ran the Kickstarter for it. And as far as we're aware, this is the earliest design for the fidget cube proposed. Right. As it exists with these kind of faces in this kind of uh, sort of arrangement, Yeah, they were the first to come out with it, but a lot of people came out with imitations. And what's funny and not so funny is that the, our Kickstarter actually delivered later yeah. than the official Fidget Cube did. And I think they're different enough. We're, we're going to weigh in at the end which one we like better. We're not going to say that right now, but they're different enough. There are some that I like better on this and some that I like better on this as far as the sides. Yeah. And and you'd, you'd actually be surprised. There's definitely pros and cons to each. I, I like using a bit of both depending on which side I'm actually yeah. planning on. Considering how superficially similar they are, once you've used it a bit, they're actually quite... In my mind, they're quite distinct. Yeah, so the first thing we're going to talk about is the first thing you see when you get your cube, which is packaging. Now, this one really goes the extra mile. It's got that little... It's like opening app, something an Apple product. Yeah, it's got that little kind of sticker on it that says, This bubble wrap kept your fidget cube safe on its journey to you. Take a moment to treat yourself and pop a few. Hashtag fidget fever. So you take that off, and then you get a box, which has a little switch on top of it, and a uh, fidget cube which is adhered onto its base with some really cool cardboard on the bottom that actually is showing you the design of each thing and some product information on the bottom. Now, you, uh, the, the fidget cube is meant to be adhered to this on the base, but as you can see, this is one we haven't opened. You can see the fidget cube is just rolling around loose inside. It came off the bottom. So sometimes I guess they have trouble with the adhesives. Yeah, the, your, your mileage is going to vary with whether this is as kind of well framed an experience as it is possible that it's just going to be shaking around loose. But for us, at least, we had, I think, two cubes out of the five that we got that were on their base. And within the base, you also get a little uh, microfiber bag that you can use to store your cube in. Uh, I guess if it's like in your pocket or something with your keys and you don't want it to get scratched, that comes with a nice little cardboard cube just in case, I guess, you oh. weren't sure what to do with the bag. Instructional. So yeah. you've got a fidget cube. So definitely, like, this part was uh, totally unnecessary, but it was a really nice touch, and everything uh, that they've done with the packaging just makes it go that extra mile to really, really feel like a premium product, to feel like you've a bought something experience. special. experience. Yeah where even the packaging itself is meant to be something where you look at it and go, oh, cool, right? Mm -hmm. um, now, the official Fidget Cube still has some really nice packaging. It's well designed. It's got a nice color scheme. It's uh, elegant. But at the end of the day, it is just a cardboard box. It's, uh, it's a little stand. There's kind of a protective foam on the inside that's not mm -hmm. just plastic. So it's going to keep your Fidget Cube nice and safe. Uh, it's going to look pretty cool when you open it, but it's not uh, anything, I I'd say, extra special. It feels like a mm -hmm. kind of thing that you might get like earbuds in, right, or uh, another periphery. But uh, this feels more like kind of the, the main event. Mm -hmm. So as far as packaging, that's only going to make a difference once, but it still is kind of a really unique experience. And I think uh, Anti Labs totally knocks it out of the park with this mm -hmm. one. I think they couldn't have done it better. Well, at least well, notwithstanding. Yeah, the, the adhesive being better. They couldn't have planned it better, I yeah. guess. Moving on to the peripherals themselves, uh, both official Fidget Cube and ANSI Lab have a silicon uh, shell for them, I guess ostensibly for protection. Uh, and again, they're, they're very similar. You'd think there wouldn't be much different, but um, ANSI Lab just goes that one extra mile. There's a keychain on it, so uh, you can use it for storage. And it's a detachable keychain where if you take it off, there's just a tiny little loop here. Um, and I don't know if you can see, you can probably get a little bit of a glimpse of that, but it's much thicker silicon for the ANSI Labs one. So this one, uh, fits a little weird, it can kind of slip, uh, but once you get it into place, it's pretty good. For the ANSI Labs one, 
it holds its form a little better, it fits on a little bit better, and it feels a little thicker and more substantial. But um, as we figured out, we've put them both on and we prefer to use our fidget cubes without them. Oh, natural? Yeah, Amanda. so, so it, it doesn't end up making a difference for us, but for somebody who wants to put the silicone sleeve on, I think the ANSI Labs one is, again, just a little bit better. Beats them by just a little bit. So enough of the teaser. Yeah, we can move on to the fidget cube the itself. The main event. This is probably the iconic face, the one that you're least likely to see anything similar on anything else, right? Because right. this is a joystick. Um, this is almost looks like the face of a die, even though it's yeah. different, right? A switch. Uh, a switch. But this is kind of iconic. It's sort of, I mean, it, in, in, it's this sort of configuration never existed before ANSI Labs. Yeah, so you can do three things with the the face. You can roll the uh, ball. In that case, it's a marble. In this case, it's a ball bearing. You can click the ball, which the lower end ones apparently don't do, according to some people. And you can roll the gears. Now, the ball uh, both actions with the ball, I think, are equally good on both. It's really a matter of personal preference. Uh, the ANSI Labs one is a little bit looser and um, as far as the ball, but the gears are really where ANSI Labs, once again, pulls ahead. Because on this one, there's one gear on both of the ones that we have, actually, that is pretty stuck. Like, I almost have to move it with my nail to move it, and the other two roll fine. But on the ANSI Labs one, all three of the gears just roll super naturally. They glide really, really easily. And it's just a lot more satisfying experience overall. Where when you get to this one, it, it's almost frustrating. It's not worth me using the gears on this one because it gets me more frustrated than it does actually help me fidget. Moving on to the joystick. This is a place where official fidget cube really shines because the ANSI Labs one has pretty restrictive movement. It just glides. It, it's flush. This one has a little bit of extra height, so you can roll it around like this. You can push it to the side with your finger, and you can click it up. And for me, this side is is just okay on the official fidget cube uh, or sorry on ANSI Labs fidget cube it's a lot nicer on the official fidget cube and this extra action really takes it the extra mile this yeah. is my favorite thing to do with this side and on this cube it's my second favorite side on ANSI Labs cube I think it's closer to the bottom and I believe it's held on by a magnet the way yeah, it works the way it clicks back in you can get paper clips to stick to the cube itself yeah so I really really like the joystick on official fidget cube and I think it's it's okay on ANSI Labs. I, think, I totally agree with you. I think it could totally be improved by making it more like this one. Yeah. Moving on to the uh, rolling surface. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what to call it. This one, I think, is really a matter of preference. Um, this one glides just smoothly and easily. No resistance. It can glide so fast almost that if your thumb is on top of it, you can kind of lose track of it. You can see it kind of comes out from under my thumb. This one glides with a little bit more resistance. So it's, it's like a ratcheting action almost. Yeah, you can hear it. And if, I don't know if we can get this on the camera properly. But it's got the ANSI Labs logo here and it says Fidget Cube. Yeah, there it is. So um, that one has a little bit more texture to the ball and it's a little bit harder for it to drop out from under your grip. When we first got these, because we had the official ones first, that was one of the things, right, that ANSI Labs delivered so late. The official one, actually, I preferred until I started using this, because I, at first, I, I it didn't felt like stiff. It felt weird, and just because of what I was used to, but now I actually like a little bit of that tactile feedback. Yeah, I like I this one still a little bit better, but again, I really think it's personal preference. I don't think we, we can say one is decisively better than the other one, because I don't think one mm -hmm. is. True. The Switch is another area of personal preference, and we actually disagree on the Switch also, oh, yeah. which one we like better. Uh, the ANSI Labs one has uh, kind of, it's a lot looser, it's uh, quieter, it's easier to switch with less resistance, and it's 
very easy to roll silently between your thumb and oh. between your thumb if you want to. Um, This one is a lot louder, it requires a lot more resistance. In my opinion, it's also a lot more satisfying, but it's a lot harder to roll silently between your thumbs. Yeah, and we think this one also uses a magnet right. because and of the paper. I actually like this one better because when I want to just, just flick it quickly back and forth, at the tip of my thumb, it's easy to do, and I can't do it with the bigger one that's got a bit more resistance and maybe a higher profile on the switch. Yeah, and I like this one because it's a thicker, kind of chunkier click, and I like that feedback a lot more than the kind of comparatively weak, in my opinion, uh, clicking like feedback of the other one. But again, that's an area of personal preference. We differ. Um, I've, I've had some other people try it out, and um, pretty much out of everybody that I've like asked, I've gotten about a 50-50 on which one they like better too. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of still up in the air. Moving on to the other side that I think a lot of people talk about, and this is my second favorite on the ANSI Labs and uh, third favorite on this one, is the pen caps. Now these have two silent ones. What did you call them? Pen caps? Pen caps. Yeah, they're like clickers. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, I always they're, think they're meant to be pen caps. Yeah, but I guess buttons. they're also buttons. There's two silent ones and three loud ones on each one. And this is another place where they differ significantly. On official fidget cube, they are rubber. And the clicks on these are really nice, but the clicks on the silent ones, um, it, there's basically just space underneath them and they're not really all that satisfying. Because what it feels like is just that you're squeezing Yeah, like you're squeezing rubber. a bit of rubber now, with a tiny me, bit of give. This one, these are the loud ones. And these are, hold on, let me see if I can get that into frame properly in focus. It's actually a button still. Yeah. So it's, it, you're actually, it feels more like you're pushing it in rather than squeezing it. So something. the silent ones here are inarguably way, way better than the silent ones on the official fidget cube. And what's really interesting is the two outside noise making ones on this cube also have high resistance and the middle one has a little bit lower resistance. It's kind of like a middle ground between the silent and the full kind of resistance loud ones. So I think this one wins on um, clicking every time. I like the um, I like the loud clickers better, uh, but again, that's probably personal preference. And I think the silent clickers are the place where it really shines. Where mm -hmm. there's, I, I, I think you'd be hard pressed to find somebody who didn't say that that motion is just a lot nicer. Mm -hmm. Moving on to the last side, we have the worry stone. Now you think that because this is pretty much just an indent, it would be very, very difficult for one to be better than the other. But it's funny because official fidget cube actually ekes out kind of a nicer feeling because of the material that they're made of. Where um, the original fidget cube, ANSI Labs, is a lot more kind of glossy, or even if it has a little bit of a matte look, it feels like kind of... It's hard. It's hard yeah, plastic. Yeah, it's hard plastic. Where this one has a kind of matte feeling, it feels a little uh, it softer a to the touch. Yeah, yeah. So this one just has a much more satisfying feeling when you're using the worry stone. Mm -hmm. So overall, although I like the joystick a lot better, the worry stone a little better, although I very, very rarely use it, and the switch a little better, we still have to both say, as a consensus, the ANSI Labs Fidget oh, yeah. Cube is the one to totally. go with. If, if I had to say which was my favorite out of all of them, it would actually have to be the gears. Yeah, that's my and, favorite also. And the ball. And so my issue with this one is that the gears are stuck, and that, to me, ruins this entire part of that side. And um, my, my other issue with that one is the pen caps, because I find that the gears and the pen caps are the ones that I'm doing most on both, but I, I also can't stop coming back to this clicking right. motion on this no, one, no, I, which is totally unique to official fidget cube. I do say, out of the three favorite sides of the both cubes combined, number one, number two, and number three. Yeah, so um, just, just by virtue of the fact that in two of the three best in most important ways, ANSI Labs beats out official fidget cube, we have to go with that one, but in, in one of the three most important ways, official fidget cube totally like just yeah. rules, it's just so much better. So you, you can get cheaper ones, I think as far as we're concerned, you're, you're paying a premium for these cubes, but 
I think you're getting better value out of them. Mm -hmm. You can't actually buy this one from Ansi Labs right now. This was the Kickstarter colorway that they had that was supposed to be an exclusive. Yeah, but you can buy this one. And just a closing kind of note, uh, this isn't a direct comparison. I have dropped this once, I haven't dropped the other one, onto uh, pavement. And I did get a little ding out of the corner. It's really hard to see now, and it's pretty hard to feel also. But took a little chunk out of it, and I actually had to um, kind of take off that little extra plastic along the edge. I had to uh, scrape it down. So that, I guess that's, you're saying a little bit, yeah, it might that's be a, worth having the prism on it. To I know that it. if I was wearing um, the prism on it, that silicone would have totally protected the impact, and it would not have been damaged. Um, but I, I, I can't speak for this one. I know that for this fidget cube, at least, don't, like, drop it off of hard, <laughs> don't drop it onto hard, slightly rough surfaces, I guess. Use it only, like, in your home or where... If, if you're less clumsy than me, I guess. So what you're saying is that those medications that tell you not to operate heavy machinery drive when you take it, they, it applies to fidgeting with your fidget cube? Yeah, so so <laughs> I would I would use this over like carpet, hardwood, and tile, but not over like driveway or concrete, like sidewalk and stuff. I Just, just in case, because you don't want to risk it. I was devastated when I dropped it, and I was so worried that anything about the experience is going to be compromised. And, and we want to thank Official Fidget Cube for sending us their product uh, at no charge for us to do the unboxing and to do the review. Yeah. So thank you guys so much. And thank you for watching. We hope this review was useful. Uh, and we'll see you guys next time. Komoda. Komoda.